Hey friends, I really hate reporting on laboratory failures, but it's part of the game, so I'm going to talk about my latest setback. Uh, it's a very disappointing one. Anyway, as I mentioned earlier, I've got this egg case. I'm very enthusiastic about being able to set up another generation of baby spiders in the lab. So this egg case was laid last week. This week, I opened it up just a little bit to look inside and make sure everything was healthy. And then I set it aside and told myself, don't mess with it. We need those eggs. Then I saw, and I showed this in a video, that there was some of the spiders were actually out and moving about. So I said, okay, great. Now we can look in a little more detail. So what I did, and what you're seeing on the screen right now, is an exploded egg case. So I went in and carefully teased it apart and opened it up, exposing all the eggs inside, seeing what was going on in there. And I'll try and interpret this image for you so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so the first thing that jumped out at me is that there's a lot of variability here. And in fact, I think I can safely say that a bunch of these eggs are simply dead. So there, I put a little skull and crossbones on those. Uh, they're all discolored and horrible looking. Um, and actually, as the experiment proceeded, they got darker and darker. So they're, these are no good. So that's the first thing you can do is just ignore those. It's distressing, though, because I shouldn't be having this much death in the egg sac. But there they are. Uh, the other thing that will jump out at you when you look at this slide is there are um, these white spots all over the place. And what are those? Well, what's supposed to happen here is that as the embryo matures, it reaches a point where it's going to split open its cuticle, it's embryonic cuticle, and it's going to crawl out and leave behind that cuticle. The cuticle tends to be attached to the end of the epithelosoma. So what you're seeing, those little white masses there, that is discarded embryonic cuticle, and that's normal and that's good. What's of concern to me, however, is look at those little red circles marking all that discarded cuticle. Most of them are associated with those dead brown things, which sort of suggests that the spider embryos got as far as opening up their cuticle, starting to emerge an eclosion, and then died. That's not good. I'm worrying about that. Okay, the next thing you should be able to see and I've marked them with little blue spiders there to make it easier to spot them. Uh, those little blue spiders mark the post embryos. So those are spiders that have successfully closed. They're, they got their limbs free. And, and when I show you this movie, you'll see they're, they're kind of wiggling those limbs. So that's good. So we've got a small set of live, happy post embryonic spiders sitting here in this dish. What's interesting to me, though, is another thing. It's, see the, those blue circles I just put on there? Those mark pre-post embryos. Okay, so they, have, they haven't eclosed yet. And what you're seeing there is you can see hints of the limbs there, the eight limbs kind of coming out. The animals are all pale. Uh, they're translucent. And they're all bundled up in this tight cuticle that they are supposed to then discard. So what they're supposed to do is they're supposed to split where that, I put a yellow line across that one that's got a convenient side view for us. So it's supposed to split across there and just kind of open up like a hatch and the embryos are supposed to emerge. So what I thought I would do is I had these here and there were some live ones there at least. I thought I would put them on the scope and do a quick time lapse and try to catch spider eclosion in the act. 
All right, so that's what I did. I, this is this is a still from a movie. I set up a quick time lapse movie. I'm going to take a picture every three minutes, splice them together into movie, and then play them back. And that's where the disappointment comes in. So what I'll do is I'll start this video and you'll be able to watch it and see what's happening. And you look and I, afterwards I'll interpret for you what happened. That wasn't so exciting, was it? Uh, what I saw happening was that initially those live embryos, the ones I had marked with little blue spiders before, they were happy and twitching in a slow, gentle sort of way. Uh, so they were definitely alive at that point. But then about a, before about a third of the way through the entire recording, uh, this was an almost 24 hour recording, uh, they stopped. They just kind of got slower and slower and went quiet and stopped moving. Uh-oh. Bad news. Uh, then if you also, you may have also noticed that the ones I was watching that were in blue circles that I wanted to see close didn't. They didn't do anything. They just sort of sat there. So what's going on here? I should have been able to see some activity, and I definitely shouldn't have seen them stop activity. So I'm, I'm racking my brain to figure out what I could have done wrong. There's a couple of concerns I have. One is, could it simply be dehydration? So I keep these normally in an incubator that's got a large pan of water in there and is pretty moist. So you've got a, a you know good humid environment inside the incubator. And I put these on the scope where, hey, this is Minnesota in December. And it's really cold outside, which means all the humidity gets sucked out of the air. So it gets kind of dry here. And it may be that that's what happened to them, is they were just desiccated. As some confirming evidence of this, when I, when I look at the beginning and end of the recording, things tend to get darker. The, the animals that were initially kind of beige or brown get darker and darker over time. It sort of looks like maybe they are drying out. Another thing that could have happened is temperature. I, I didn't set up my temperature controlled stage for these guys. I just kind of threw them on the scope, figuring that, you know, they're supposed to be raised at 25 degrees C, which is pretty close to room temperature. So I thought, ah, they'll be fine. Um, it's quite possible, though, that because of cost-saving measure, measures at the university, I think they turn the heat down in the evening. Not a lot, but they've got it regulated so it goes down a little bit. So the temperature may have dropped. They may have just gotten cold and died. I, I don't know how sensitive they are to that. Since these are growing up normally in the wild in Minnesota, you'd think they'd be a little bit cold tolerant, but um, that's that's another possibility. Okay, so it's, it's a little worrisome. I've gone from having a whole bunch of eggs waiting for me to develop into new spiders for my colony to only a few maybe, and maybe they, are, they already died while I was watching them. Oh, that would be tragic. So what I've done right now is I've rescued these guys. I've actually put a little water directly into the petri dish they're in to sort of up the humidity there they're in a, now in a temperature controlled environment so they're not going to drop below 25 degrees c ah, 
I'm just hoping that I didn't kill the entire egg case. But we'll see. It's nerve-wracking business, this raising new animals. So uh, I'll just end it there. We'll wait and see. I'll check back on these guys tomorrow and see if they've done better after being restored to proper temperature and humidity. Although it's entirely possible that I've killed the entire uh, collection of embryos. Ah, okay. Deep breaths, deep breaths. It's Christmas. We can handle this. All right. Well, that's all for now. Sometimes things just don't go the way you want them to. Okay. Talk to you later. Bye.